Hello, and welcome to the Wellbeing web series. My name is Ryan Mason. I'm a UK um, health and wellness exercise specialist and also a fifth year PhD candidate in the exercise physiology program here at UK. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about making repetitions the new holiday tradition. So for today's agenda, we're going to talk about the benefits of exercise and why you should incorporate some sort of physical activity into your holiday traditions. Uh, I'm also going to share my story of how I came across this idea and why it's a passion of mine. <clears throat> I'll cover some considerations for implementing physical activity into your holiday traditions. I will cover some ideas of activities that you could incorporate and I'll also establish the basics for assessing whether or not you should consult a doctor before engaging in physical activity. So most of us know that exercising is beneficial to our health. Some of the more profound reasons um, why exercise is beneficial are outlined here. So whenever people are engaging in exercise, we see a reduced risk of heart attack. We see a reduced weight, a reduction in blood cholesterols. We see a reduction in diabetes and some cancers. And we also see a reduction in blood pressure. <clears throat> um, some things that are improved that also uh, are a benefit would be an increase in bone mineral density or bone strength. We also see an increase in joint resiliency we see an uh, increase in muscle, uh, both in swat size and quality of tissue. And then we can also see an actual uh, positive correlation in participation in exercise and age of independence, meaning people who exercise more tend to remain independent longer. We also can see an increase in mood uh, associated with participation in exercise. Whenever we look at the mind, there are some pretty profound um, changes that happen there as well. Exercise may block negative thoughts or distract you from daily worries. Exercising with others provides an opportunity for increased social contact. Increased fitness may lift your mood and improve your sleep patterns. And exercise may also change levels of chemicals in your brain, such as serotonin, endorphins, and stress hormones. So what does this mean to me? Although many of us look forward to the holiday time spent with family, sometimes it can also be a very stressful situation. Creating some sort of physical outlet during these events can boost everyone's morale. Also, physical events tend to create a pleasant experience upon reflection. A lot of us just spend time with loved ones over the holidays, sitting around and eating, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but whenever we think about past holiday gatherings, do most people tend to reminisce on the foods that made up the plate of what they ate that day, or do they tend to focus more on the physical interactions made with loved ones? Uh, I would venture to say most of us remember and cherish the interactions more. So incorporating physical activity into holiday traditions will give us more interaction and hopefully bring more pleasure to our holiday gatherings. So quickly, uh, I'm gonna share my story, um, how this became a passion of mine and what my family's holiday tradition is. So uh, back in the fall of 2013, I was a graduate assistant for health and wellness while I was pursuing my master's in exercise physiology. Uh, one of my assignments at that point in time was to help out with our eat well class. Um, and while I was in one of those classes, this very topic came up uh, about exercise or physical activity and holiday traditions. And one of our dietitians asked if anyone in the class had any holiday traditions that didn't involve eating. So I was looking around the room, only one person raised their hand up. Um, and she said, whenever she was a child, her family went hiking every Christmas morning. And so at that moment, I kind of reflected on what my family traditions are. And I realized that I, like the majority, um, didn't really have anything exciting to mention or to contribute to this. So um, I was immediately drawn to this experience that she had as a child because I am a very active outdoor person. 
So that night, I uh, asked my then fiance if she would be interested in starting a Mason family Christmas hike. And she thought the idea was really neat. And um, we got started just a couple months later on Christmas Day 2013. So this is uh, the photo from our inaugural hike um, where we were engaged. And it just so happened this year, we were at my family's house in Western Kentucky. So this photo was taken at Pinnerell State Forest in Dawson Springs, Kentucky. The next year, year two, um, at this point, we were just married um, in the summer before this. And for this hike, we went to Tom Dorman Nature State Preserve, or State Nature Preserve in Garrett County. And then year three, you can see now we have a dog. Um, what you can't tell from this photo actually is that my wife was pregnant at this time. So um, we decided to stay in Lexington and we just went into the loop at Veterans Park. And then year four, now you can see we're a family of three, which is really exciting. Once again, um, we did have a small child at this point, so we wanted to stay close. Um, and we went to McConnell Springs, um, which is a really nice trail uh, right here in Lexington. Then year five, not much changed. At um, mm -hmm. this point, we were on our way to Western Kentucky again, so we decided it would be a good opportunity to uh, break up the drive a little bit and stop along the way. So we ended up at Buffalo Lake near Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And now uh, the last one we did, year six, you can see uh, in the background there is a little blurry, but Monty made a comeback to our hikes. Um, once again, what you can't tell from this photo is my wife is, was pregnant again and but it was a beautiful Christmas day, so we decided that we could still do a little bit of traveling, and we ended up going to Asbury Trails in Wilmore, Wilmore, Kentucky. So this year will be our seventh annual Mason Family Christmas hike, and we haven't decided on a location yet since we will have a four-month-old and a three-year-old, but one thing you can count on is we'll find a trail somewhere that will fit our needs. So we're going to talk now about um, what you can do and how you can go about implementing a new tradition of your own. So let's talk about some considerations. Um, you need to ask yourself these questions beforehand, and that will help ensure a smooth execution of your uh, first, first annual tradition. So is everyone healthy enough to participate? So basically what we're getting at here is, does anyone need any additional assistance to participate? So there may be some accommodations that you might have to make for certain people in your family. Um, and thinking about that upfront will just help out. Then what is everyone's experience level? So you don't wanna do anything that's too intense, particularly if your family is not generally active. So if this is something that you are kind of just starting and your family doesn't do a lot of physical activity, um, you really wanna look at maybe doing something that's low intensity. So what is the age range of people you're planning for? Can modif modifications or accommodations be made to help include older or younger family members? And then uh, lastly, are you more of an indoor or outdoor family? So if your family doesn't like outdoors or doing something like my family does, it's probably not a great choice to choose something like hiking, but um, there are tons of options out there and we'll get to that shortly. The next thing, we just really wanna make sure that you're safe. So as with any exercise, it's important to make sure that you um, are not at an elevated risk of injury or um, any sort of metabolic or cardiovascular events. So this is a physical activity readiness questionnaire. Basically, the way it works is if you answer no to all seven of these questions listed here, then you can pretty much um, just go ahead and start exercising without any further consultation. But if you answer no, then there are some follow-up questions 
um, to the Park U Plus, and they can be found at the link that's listed here. Um, we can post later. Okay. So um, keep in mind as I'm going through this list, this is definitely not an exhaustive list of things that you can do. These are just some general ideas. So the first thing um, would be something like a turkey trot. So a turkey trot is a 5K that's usually offered on Thanksgiving Day, and these are pretty popular. So if you look around, um, a lot of different cities or towns have these, and it's something that would be pretty easy to find. Uh, along the same kind of lines, a reindeer run is a 5K that's offered around Christmas time. And these aren't always called reindeer runs, but um, they're also really popular. The Kentucky Horse Park has one associated with the Southern Lights display that I hear is really amazing. So that could be something that you might want to check out. Um, but 5Ks are a great option because you can choose either to walk together or you can choose to participate individually at your own pace. Another great thing about these is they're usually sanctioned events and the courses are kept in good shape. Um, they're safer areas when the winter weather uh, may be bad, some, some locations. So if, you, uh, if your family is musically inclined and you enjoy lots of music, Christmas caroling is a great traditional option um, to get you outside of the house and get you out in your neighborhood, um, walking around, moving, getting exercise, and then spreading holiday cheer as well. So if Christmas caroling or caroling in general is not your thing, then uh, simply getting your family outside to look at holiday lights can be fun. There are usually neighborhoods in most cities that are known for going above and beyond with lighting. So rather than going there in your car and driving around, um, park your car, bundle up, get out and walk through the neighborhood, uh, get some steps in, and then also enjoy the lights. So doing a family step challenge is a really interesting idea. Activity trackers are very popular nowadays, and you can use a third-party fitness tracker consolidation app uh, like Strikekick to make a family challenge and encourage each other to get more steps. You can even set up some sort of award or trophy system that the winner gets to keep from year to year, kind of similar to how the hockey has Stanley Cup. So they can make something uh, really exciting that can be passed down. And yoga is another great thing uh, that you could do for a holiday tradition. It's a, it's a great way to get everyone up and moving. And most programs are relatively easy to scale to the exper um, experience of the user. If you don't know how to do yoga or you don't own any instructional videos, there are a lot of free beginner yoga lessons available on YouTube. So um, some Wii games, such as Wii Boxing, are actually a really great workout. If you've never tried um, this game, you should give it a shot. Uh, I know my parents bought it, and we went, I went home, and we actually did a little Wii tournament and definitely can get you out of breath. Uh, but this would be a really great indoor option to get family members off the couch and moving a little bit. So moving on, um, so scavenger hunt is a really good idea. If you are really creative, you may want to set up your own scavenger hunt, but if designing a complex series of riddles is not your thing, uh, there are a lot of free templates online like this one um, in the PowerPoint that are available where you simply get people outside and you find items on a checklist to complete the scavenger hunt. A good twist on this is to encourage pictures at each of the items on the checklist and then have a photography contest um, at the end of the scavenger hunt. This gives the opportunity to award uh, multiple winners. So you could give an award for things such as the person who completes the scavenger hunt the fastest, the best photo, the funniest photo. Um, the list can go on for as many categories as you want to create. Bowling is another great indoor option. 
bowling alleys uh, may not be open on the actual holiday, uh, but keep in mind that all of your holiday traditions don't always happen the day of. Many people have multiple celebrations around the holiday season, so that makes this a very viable option. So trampoline parks can be a lot of fun. And if you haven't been on a trampoline in a while, trust me when I say it's a really great workout. Uh, keep in mind that this option is going to be one where you definitely need to assess the population before you plan to attend. A trampoline park definitely won't work for every family, but for some families, it will be a really great experience. So uh, this is another option that could be great for indoors and definitely has the potential to create some sort of trophy system that's passed down from year to year. You can uh, even kind of even the odds, so to say, a little bit for the whole family by creating some sort of rule system. For example, you could allow some participants to do modified push-ups or even use some sort of age-adjusted scale, such as each person starts with their age divided by three. So in that scenario I just mentioned, um, someone who's 60 years old would have a starting score of 20, where someone who's 15 would have a starting score of five. So that kind of bridges the gap between uh, age and strength and um, really can make it fun for everyone. So maybe planning something big or organized trip is something that causes a lot of stress in your family. And that, in that case, um, just grab a speaker and have a 20 minute dance break during the holiday get together. Uh, sometimes the holiday seasons can cause us to get up tight. So just let loose and have fun with it. If you're having trouble uh, coming up with dance moves, you can always look to the younger kids in your party. Um, just mimic what they're doing. They're usually experts at cutting loose and getting energy out. Sledding is an obvious, uh, obviously weather dependent in our, our area, but this is another great traditional winter activity that you can do uh, as a family. And then, um, any sports competition can be incorporated for a holiday tradition. So if there's a sport that your family's particularly fond of, just incorporate it. I was just talking to a colleague the other day um, and he was telling me that every year on Christmas Eve, his family has a ping pong tournament. So don't be afraid to think outside the box. You know, this is a really great idea for them and it really works out. Um, there's so many sports uh, where you can take portions of it and create a different type of game. So, for example, if your family really likes football, but playing a football game um, is not really in the cards for you all, you can do something like a punt, pass, and kick competition where each person gets to throw a football, punt a football, and then kick a football off the tee for as far as they can. Um, then you would measure each distance, add them up, and whoever has the largest total of yards will be the winner. Um, but you don't always have to choose a winner either. Um, you can just do these things for fun without the competition. So each family is very different and unique and um, only your family knows what is right for them. So um, maybe some of these ideas resonated with you or maybe they didn't, but these are just the ideas that I came up with. Um, you all know your family better and can decide what will and won't work. The idea is for you to find something your family can enjoy together. So we just really want to make sure that we're having fun um, and we want to enjoy this togetherness with the family. So um, doing something like this will give you something to look back on in the past as well as something to look forward to in the future. So if you listen to me talk today and decided you want to do something to incorporate some sort of physical activity uh, as a holiday tradition, but you want some more help, my contact information will be available uh, and you can certainly reach out to me and we can talk through this and we can work something out. Um, I can help you come up with some alternate ideas together. So let's see. Thank you guys very much. Um, our next presentation in the well-being web series will be by Amy Rockwis Cadet. And the title is Name It to Tame It, Identify, Identifying Feelings and Needs. <laughs>